clap those hands and put your hands together for Jesus right here. Of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you may not have room 
believe enough to receive it all. If you want God to receive this praise right here, it's going to take you to open your mouth. It's going to take you to put it in your memory. I know your misery, it may be in your memory. But we thank God for the miracle. We thank God for the sun. And we thank God for the one. Just let you get it out before I say anything else. God wants to hear some of you say something to him right now. You haven't said nothing since you came in the door. But God says, I want you to open up your mouth and bless me like you know that I'm the blesser. Bless me like you know that I'm worthy of the blessing. Is he not worthy of it? I want to share it with you. I, I love movies, and when I watched this movie called the, uh, it's called The Wiz, I believe, and uh, there, there was all these different characters in the movie. Oh my God, but you got to understand where we've been. We've been easing on down this road that we call the path to Pentecost. Uh, but as we ease on down the road, uh, uh, I believe that Dorothy and the lion, they come in contact with a tin man. And he had his mouth shut up and couldn't quite say what he needed to say. Uh, uh, but they realized that he was asking them to pass me the oil. Y'all gonna catch it in a minute. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need you. No, tell him with some authority, neighbor, I need you to pass me the oil. Because as we get ready to ease down the road, when my mouth began to move and do something that ain't been in a long time, We gon' get back home. So I want you to know that after 29 days of fasting, we're looking for some fresh oil to see something we've never seen, to do something that we've never done. We're expecting the miracle. We're expecting signs and wonders. So tell your neighbor, excuse me, I'm about to press in for 30 seconds for this oil. Peace. 
See, I came here to preach a word today. But God says, even now, what you need is already beginning to move through the house. When the praises of God go forth, the Bible says that he inhabits within the praises of his people. So when his people, those of us that believe, begin to praise, God begins to manifest his glory. And ain't no sickness in him. as if God has done something for you. If God ain't did nothing for you, it's okay. I, I know we've been standing all service, but I want you to sit down. Woo. God has been speaking. He's been moving. He's been doing the last 30 plus days. If he ain't did nothing, I understand. We're just getting bodily exercise right now. The Bible says that bodily exercise is going to profit us just a little bit. But if you know that God has already done some stuff before the conclusion of this fast came, I want you to release one more shout of praise as unto the Lord. You can dance if you want to, but I want you to open your mouth and let the spirits of this region know and understand that there is a witness that still yet remains that God is moving us. Amen. Grab your Bibles if you got them on your phones, your devices, whatever it is. Amen. We're going to the book of 2 Corinthians 
chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We honor the Lord for each of you in this place. And those of you that are online, we honor the Lord for First Lady Obi, amen, who's done a tremendous job leading us in worship. Amen. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you can sing, we need to know. Hallelujah. Because we want to relieve her. There's no reason why that she's leading worship on a youth Saturday service. Amen. And still bringing forth a dynamic word of God the way she did. Did she not preach last Saturday, y'all? Yeah. All right. That's cool for me. But when we talk about my wife, let's, let's, let's put some respect on that one. She brought a serious, bona fide word last week. I ain't telling y'all to clap because it's my wife. I'm telling y'all to clap because it's for real. We want to keep her real. I have a firm belief if you don't see the altar moving after you finish speaking, you need to go back to the drawing board. Amen. Uh, but when we was outside in the neighborhood, we saw the altar moving, hallelujah, Jesus, with the young people. Glory to God. Young people moving on the altar. And we thank God for the young folks. Amen. They came to Jesus. They rededicated, recommitted, and resubmitted their lives to the unadulterated authority and will of God. Amen. We're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Thank God. Amen. For Mother Johnson. Amen. One of our uh, mothers on the mother's board here. And uh, Evangelist Katrina Christian who prays down fire and preaches down fire. And, 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 and whatever else she does, she does it with fire. Amen. Deacon Peters and Deacon Blaylock. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. We thank God for everybody in their respective places. Hallelujah. We're reading 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting at the third verse. I'm going to go down to the sixth verse. And it reads, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and doing of his word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day, life, health, and strength. God, I thank you, amen, for this fast that we've been on, God, for you purging us, God, you squeezing that which is unlike you up out of us, God, and we releasing it, and we're never to pick it up, God, and we thank you that we're open and receptive to what you have to say in this hour, what you're going to say in this moment, what you're going to do in this service from the preach word of God. So we ask, God, that you be my strength and my redeemer. Oh, Lord, God, decrease me and you increase within me as I preach your word. God, my lips and my mouth, and you be glorified in Jesus' name. Everybody say thank God and amen. Well, people of God, what's going on, Cousin Mo? Hallelujah. See one of my cousins here. Amen. Well, here we are. We're on day, I believe, 39 of our 40-day fast. And uh, for some, this was not challenging as it was for others. Uh, but 40 days is still 40 days. Hallelujah. Amen. And some of us, we've uh, we've never fasted so much as of for 40 minutes, let alone 40 days. But the number 40, uh, thank God for Sister Rashonda leading this devotion. She gave me some information to go and look up and research. Amen. And I realized that the number 40 it generally symbolizes a period of testing, a period of trial or a probation of some sorts. And I can't speak for you, but I can only testify of myself and say with all honesty that I faced some good days thus far on this fast, but I've shown up seeing some bad ones. And uh, every test has and will continue to end in that of the testimony. And all of my trials, Sister Katrina, they've ended in that of triumph. And so even in this moment, I look back at times where I failed myself. I failed my God and I failed, amen, and what I was supposed to be getting rid of, amen. I can look back and I can say, thanks be unto God, uh, which always causes us to triumph in Christ uh, and make it manifest the Savior of his knowledge uh, by us in every place. Come on, somebody say everywhere. everywhere. 
Yes, God. The old saints, they used to sing this song, and some of y'all may have heard it, that he brought me out of the darkness, and he brought me forth into his marvelous light. Uh, look where he's brought me from. And uh, sometimes I think back on the dark places and the dark spaces that God has delivered me from. But I want to let somebody know that the darkness that we endured uh, was never designed for your demise, but it was designed for your deliverance. Uh, I'll say that again, and y'all can put that one in the comments online. The darkness was never designed for your demise, but it was designed for your deliverance. Yes. And when God delivers you out of the darkness, you ought not have a desire to go back into that which you've already came from. And I believe it's Isaiah 5 and chapter uh, ch chapter 5, verse 20, Mike, that tells us, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light uh, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. But Jesus says in Matthew 5, 5 and 16 uh, to let your light so shine before oh, men. Uh, you got to let it shine in the public. You got to let it shine in the schoolhouse, young men. You got to let it shine on your job, Shana. You got to let it shine uh, when folk that you know at church that know how to buck, dance, and shout like we just did. When they not looking at you, you still got to let your light shine. That men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And I remember the man uh, 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 I, I, I was before before Jesus, he entered into my mind and he entered into my heart and he entered uh, uh, into every aspect of my life. But uh, I understand that if any man be in Christ, he is indeed a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things have now become new. Though God made me over, Sister Rashonda, it was during that time uh, and during the course of this fast that I honestly believe that God actually made me better. Uh, yeah, God has made me a better man man on this fast because it's some stuff that was in me uh, that had it not been for this fast mode I would not have realized that this stuff was still in me. Had it not been for this fast, amen, this stuff would have never been brought to the surface and it would have still been down there at sea level way deep down in the pits of my emotions and my personality and that's what I'm blaming it on but really it's a spirit that was working in me hallelujah Jesus when I think of the foolishness that I indulged in and uh, uh, the foolishness I spent time and I wasted days and I, I low-key started to feel uh, 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 slighted. I started to feel played. And according to our text, uh, uh, through though, 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 though he has not ordained for us to fight our battles in the same way that the world does. Uh, the weapons we use, Sister Shariel, uh, ain't gonna have 16 shots in it. Uh, uh, it ain't gonna have them spread lugs in it. But, uh, 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 but our weapons uh, have power from God that can destroy the enemy's strong places. Destroy people's little petty arguments and every proud idea that seems to raise itself against the knowledge of God. And uh, God just want me to let somebody know that I got this. Uh, that's what God trying to tell you today. God is saying, I got this and I got you too. And for these next few fleeting moments, he that has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, I decree and declare that you shall hear as I attempt to encourage every heart and mind on the line, and especially each of you that came here in the room from the thought of uh, revenge for the righteous. I say that again. This shall be revenge for the righteous. Uh, uh, come on, look at your neighbor and tell somebody it's revenge for the righteous. Uh, yes, God, I know some of the super deep saints online and maybe even one of y'all in here right now saying revenge. God ain't in that. God ain't in no revenge. But uh, yes, revenge is not my job to go out and to rebuke and expose and to disclose the foolishness that we hear and we see that's going on in the church and in the body of Christ today. Uh, but people of God, we do have a responsibility to carry out that of 1 Timothy, I believe chapter 4, verse 12, which tells us to be an example of believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in our love, y'all, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. And some of us, we've had some ways in us that could not come out except but by fasting and praying. And uh, according to our scripture, if we want to be in position to see God render uh, revenge for the righteous, we must first uh, for fit our flesh to flourish in the fulfillment of the Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. I think that uh, 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 the scripture took me over to Philippians.
Philippians 2 and 12 where Paul was telling those amen that served with and alongside of him during his time uh, uh, that you obeyed the Lord in my presence uh, uh, but even the more I need you to obey God in my absence and by working out your own soul salvation with fear and with trembling and I believe that's the problem with many of us uh, 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 brother Mo uh, we don't work out our soul salvation with fear and with trembling uh, we don't fear God no more amen we don't put our blunts down and put our bottles down when the man of God comes by and we don't turn the radio down when we pass by the church no more and, 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 and we don't have no respect amen for the things that go on inside the house because we've seen how some inside the house carry on outside the house uh, uh, we don't work out our own soul salvation with fear and with trembling amen uh, 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 we, we come to church and we're so gifted and we think that because we're gifted uh, that's it but let me let you know amen the gifts are given but fruit is what formulated uh, you don't want the gift amen and not have no fruit to go with it uh, and the fruit is only going to come to you except by the spirit of God I believe he said uh, in the book of Zechariah that it's not by my might nor by my power but it's by my spirit uh, we've got to work out our soul salvation with fear and with trembling and likewise though we draw strength from one another when we get to clap together and we dance together and we sing our songs together and we gather in the unity and the fellowship of the saints uh, yes that has its time and its place uh, but let me remind you that this race uh, is not a relay race uh, but this race that we run is an individual race uh, uh, it's good to know how to pray with pastor on the line and pray with sister uh, Rashawn and sister Katrina sister Kendra and first lady Obi on the line uh, hallelujah when we're leading you in prayer uh, but how much time are you investing in the digesting of the word of God on your own uh, uh, we see you consistent in public we see you consistent every morning on zoom probably ain't got out the bed ain't burst your teeth washed your face you're just chilling and listening hallelujah it don't take much effort to do all of that but how much time are you investing in your own spiritual growth uh, uh, we see you consistent in public but where is your persistence in your private time uh, you may never get a microphone no you might not never preach it you might not never preach nowhere else uh, uh, but are you still willing to cry loud and spare not are you still willing to cry out loud that is me is me is me oh lord that's standing in the need of prayer it ain't my mother it's not my father not my brother not my sister but it's me come on somebody just admit it say it's me uh, it's me and it's our flesh that has its own will and its own desires and God always does what it is that he plans and this is why he appointed Christ to choose each and every one of us and he did this so we all would bring honor unto him and uh, uh, he would also give us that great hope and so as we put our faith in Christ it's imperative y'all that we receive the Holy Ghost to show forth the signs the wonders and the miracles to prove that we belong to God just tell somebody and every devil that's listening to you and even the witches that's watching this broadcast that's coming to try to bring sabotage against this ministry just tell them each and every person in here we all belong to God we belong to God you better make it plain because the enemy knows that his time is short and he's seeking out that which he can uh, go out in the earth uh, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour but how many of you know that God is a jealous God and we can't put nothing or nobody before him that's the reason why in the Ten Commandments that was the first of the ten amen that there will have no other gods before me you say well I don't worship Buddha I don't worship Muhammad I, 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 I don't worship all these false deities I'm not a Satanist uh, but when you put that blunt amen before you get on your knees amen but you put that blunt to your lips you've made that weed your God when you can't go to bed amen and before you realize I'm restless maybe God wants to talk to me you decide to pop some melatonin or pop some other medication you have not made that melatonin in them pills your God each and every time that you decide that I'm not going to come to church today because it's hot outside and I want to go see my new boo hallelujah when you put that boo above the things of God and we don't gather but once a week hallelujah Jesus but when you put that boo above God hallelujah you've now made your boo your God it's anything that you put above the work and the will of God over your life uh, you 
have now made that your God. But he said, I don't want nothing to nobody before me. And this is why we must call all carnal activity to be cast down into captivity. I'll say that again. We got to call all carnal activity to be cast down into captivity. I believe it's Romans 8, 5, and 6, which tells us, uh, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Uh, but they that are after the spirit mind the things of the spirit. And for to be carnally minded is death. Uh, but to be spiritually minded is life is peace. Uh, uh, yeah, being carnal means that you're just wrapped up and tied up in all the foolishness of this world and your own sin. But I believe in the book of Hebrews, they told us to lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Uh, but you okay with being set back because you're comfortable being set in your ways. You're comfortable being set the way you've been set. And this 40 days ain't did nothing for you. It ain't got the opportunity to do nothing for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, but I believe somewhere in the Bible, Romans 6 and 23 to be exact, the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Thank God for the men of the house. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And some of y'all ain't got no peace in your life uh, because you're so carnal minded and firm in your flesh that you can't so much as even think the name of Jesus. And I believe that it's Isaiah 26 and 3, Brother BJ, that tells us that you keep, that, 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 that he keep us in perfect peace, uh, whose minds are stayed on him, uh, uh, whose uh, thoughts are fixed upon him. And uh, he's only only going to give perfect peace to those that are firm in their faith and you've got to get to the place where you fortify your faith in the things of that of the father and not in your friends and not in your little followers online hallelujah jesus not trying to find fame and fortune uh when the main objective should be to make the name of the lord great and and we wonder why we're unstable because even with shootings going on in the grocery stores and uh, elementary schools and and, and folks acting foolish, amen, and uh, 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 still not made up in your mind that you want to be free from the carnality that rests upon you and the fact that we become complacent and comfortable, uh, uh, struggling from putting on a form of godliness and denying the very power thereof. Uh, uh, the book of James tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Uh, uh, yeah, you can't get no relationship because you're unstable in your mind. You can't get no more money in no new job because you unstable in your mind. You can't get a little word and a little revelation, a little bit of prayer in with God because you unstable in your mind. But the day that you make up in your mind that I'm not going to be fickle, that I'm going to have faith, that's when God will be able to come in and move. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. You refuse to confront the elephant in the room, but one thing I know uh, I can testify when it comes to healing and deliverance and breakthrough. Uh, when you don't confront it, you'll conform to it. Uh, I say that again. When you don't confront it, you'll conform to it. Y'all better be careful of people in your life and people in your world, amen, that don't want to confront nothing. That don't want to talk about it. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want... I'm one of them ones when I get mad at you, I ain't got but so much talk time in me. Hallelujah. But I'm going to deal with what I need to because I, I know me. Once I get hot, I'm not going to stop. And so I give you just enough conversation for us to get an understanding. Once we got the understanding... Hallelujah, Jesus. Rashonda, I'm through talking. Uh, uh, you need to go on, go on about your business. Let me calm down. Hallelujah, Jesus. But 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 you better be careful for those that can't even do the little bit. If they can't confront something, you'll find yourself conforming to something. You'll find yourself compromising your standards, compromising your personal beliefs, all for the sake that somebody don't want to confront what's working in them. And yes, we are in this world, but people of God, we're not of this world. And once you accept freedom in Jesus, you You've got to stand fast in the liberty where when God has already called us to be free and be not entangled again. Come on, somebody say, don't go back there. Uh-uh, don't go back there. You can't be entangled again at the casino. You can't be entangled again at the strip club. You can't be entangled again with that little side piece. You can't be entangled again with that drug and that alcohol and that addiction that had you jacked up, toe up, pulling a mouth and crazy out here in these streets. So you can't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And it's impossible to move forward in freedom uh, while you're still looking backwards at the carnal things uh, that had us captive. And uh, there was a reason that your windshield, y'all, is way bigger than that of your rearview mirror. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell your neighbor to stop looking back there. 
Yes, God. Uh, 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 once upon a time, y'all, I actually read this uh, when I was taking some of my college courses, and I promised, Pastor, I'm going back to school. Amen. In the fall, I'm going back. I'm going to get my degree. Amen. I'm going to be a chaplain like I said I would because I want to do ministry all day, every day. But I read in one of my sociology classes uh, that they try to separate us people, human beings, into three main categories. You have that of the upper class, you have the middle working class, and then you have that of the lower class. And, and in the days of old, the days that we read about in the Bible, of the upper class, they were forbid from mingling and mixing with that of the lower class. And, uh, they couldn't be around the peasants, and they couldn't be around the servants and the slaves. And you young kids, y'all ever seen the movie Aladdin? Uh, there's a reason why Aladdin had to pretend to be somebody that he was not, because Jasmine was from the upper class and he was just a peasant. Hallelujah, Jesus. He couldn't go in the palace and holler at Jasmine. How you doing, girl? Jasmine, I know you see me looking at you. I know you see me running through these streets and these alleys and stuff. Uh, but I can't be your boo because I'm just a peasant. I can't be your boo because I'm just a slave. I can't be your boo because we're not on the same level. That's a word for some of you young ladies in here right now. Uh, you need to be careful who you make your boo because some of these Negroes ain't on your level. Hallelujah, Jesus. They were slaves and can I submit to each of you, my brothers and my sisters, when you said yes to God, yes, I'm going to make it spiritual right here. When you said yes to God, you automatically were upgraded from the lower class to that of the upper class. And uh, yes, we still struggle. And yes, you still ain't got it all together. Uh, but my position ain't going to be predicated on my current condition. And my declaration ain't going to be based upon my situation. And we've got to keep walking. Hallelujah, Jesus. We've got to keep walking in the liberty where Christ has already made us free. God bless you, my sisters. You can't go back to your place of lack. God bless you, my brother. And every time you go and you expect to grow, I'll say that again because somebody needs to hear it. You can't come from your place of lack. God bless your elder. My bad. I, I see your face now. You can't come from your place of lack and then go back and expect to grow from that. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's called being fickled and a, a flip-flam. Uh, uh, Y'all know wishy-washy and uh, God hasn't called us to be fickle, but he's called us to a place of faith. And uh, so even the more as we embark upon the day of Pentecost, and we conclude this fast on tomorrow. Oh uh, my God, we've got to tell every carnal captivity under subjection. Hallelujah, yes. Jesus. We've got to neglect it, and we've got to reject it. Everything that once had us bound. Brother Michael, I believe I'm ready to close right here. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell them that it's coming down and I'm coming out. Come on, tell somebody else prophetically in the spirit, it's coming down and I'm coming out. Come on, maybe that's the wrong neighbor. Tell somebody that whatever it is, it's coming down and I'm coming out. Hallelujah, Jesus. And at the end of this fast, we should then see some things come out uh, uh, as a result of the fasting and the prayer through our consistency in that. Uh, uh, but you shouldn't be going through the same trial. Uh, uh, but in essence, you should be looking to overcome the very next one. Uh, uh, as we come out from this place, uh, come on, somebody shout this place. Uh, you better guard your heart with all diligence. Uh, for folks, they going to see you and immediately uh, they going to begin to see the the difference on you. They're going to begin to see the difference of God in your life. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, they're going to begin to even try you. Uh, and some going to downright lie on you. Uh, uh, hallelujah, God. Because they're trying to figure out why. And they're trying to figure out how. That they don't know why they don't know you no more. Because you don't look like what you used to look like. Uh, you don't smell like what you used to smell like. Uh, you don't seem like you've been through what you went and went through. But when they can't touch who you've become, they try to dig up who you used to be. When they can't become friends with the person that you used to be, they just start making up stuff, Mike. And they talk about who you used to be. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, somebody need to open their mouth right there and declare that of Psalm 118. I believe somewhere about the sixth verse uh, that the Lord is I said the Lord is the Lord is on my side and I will not fear what can man do unto me for if God be for me that's more than the world against me our text tells us that the weapons uh, of our warfare these weapons they ain't carnal but they're mighty 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 through the pulling down of strongholds. So we stand in 
disconnect I believe what the book of Isaiah Chapter 54 verse 17 That tells us that no weapon That is formed against us Is able to prosper He didn't say the weapon wouldn't form He just promised us that the weapon wouldn't prosper And every time That rises up against us In judgment you shall condemn Hallelujah Jesus And this is the heritage Of the servants of the Lord And the righteousness Is of me says God God says That you better not touch his anointing And you can't do his prophets no more Hallelujah Jesus You better find you somebody And lock eyes with him and say, neighbor, I'm anointed, I'm appointed, and this ain't what the devil wants, because I belong to God. Our text tells us uh, that we ought to have readiness uh, to revenge all disobedience. When our own obedience is yet fulfilled, uh, but God says that he wants you to know that because you belong to God, they do wrong. They do wrong to you. It's just like that they did wrong to me. Every time that they lie on you, they already lied on me. Every time they try to talk bad about you, they talk bad about me. Every time they turn their back on you, they, it's like they turn their back on me. When they try to sabotage you, sabotage your progress, sir. sabotage your success, sir. they're sabotaging my will because my hand is already on you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sir. As a matter of fact, God told me to tell you that it's from folk around you that you need to get away from the spirit you're in rules because they're sabotaging your success. Sir. They're speaking ill against you. Now don't call David. No, don't, 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 don't look for David. Because they're jealous of what's on you. God put a natural ability on you. And sometimes people, they have to work a little harder than others. Sir. And they see that some things are coming easy for you. But God told me to tell you that no matter what you do, no matter where you go, you can't run and you can't hide. Because you belong to God. I have need of you. Can somebody encourage David and say, David, God has need of you. God is calling you by name. He's calling you out from the darkness. And he says, step into my life. He said he's calling you out of the corner. You can't hide over there. You can't blend in with your friends. You stick out like a sore throat. Every time you do it, always the one to get caught up because God has need of you. He can't afford to allow his investment to go down the drain. And he's invested his spirit in you. He's invested his glory over your life. He's invested into you and rolled you into his will. Come on, somebody that'll receive that right now. Just say, Lord, let me into your hands. do you like that they do it as unto God for the second time I want everybody to say it they say it's because I belong to God hallelujah Jesus and God says I'm ready to revenge and that word revenge it can be defined as an opportunity to retaliate or to gain satisfaction the Greek translation of this very word is ekdikai, ekdikao, and it's spelled E-K-D-I-K-E-O, which is translated as one who vindicates to avenge, to dispense justice, or to carry out judgment in its entirety. And God want me to tell somebody that this is the season, I said this is the season for you to see judgment and you're going to begin to see justice uh, to come up on the just uh, as well as the unjust uh. hallelujah Jesus uh, and he's going to do it to his own satisfaction for God ain't mocked whatsoever a man so yet so shall he also reap hallelujah Jesus uh, yes warning is going to come before destruction but this is the season that you shall see God carry it. He's going to carry it all the way through. They're not 
gonna slip through the cracks. They not gonna go unscathed. But God says whatever they sow, this the season they gonna reap. Whatever you sow, get ready to reap it. He said because I am that I am. You ain't gotta get vindictive because I am the vindicator. Stop trying to avenge those uh, that have been done wrong. He said, for I am the avenger. I'm closing right here, y'all. He says, I am the avenger. Maybe some of y'all Marvel fans will catch this one. But God told me to tell somebody that I'm getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to do it for you. And you're going to know that it's the Lord's doing. Because it was Marvel Us in my eyes. And let me give you a quick English lesson. Anytime you hear the suffix of O-U-S, that means that it's full of something. Or it's abounding in whatever it began with. So yes, you've seen the Marvel. But what God's getting ready to do is how we Marvel Us. The Marvel going to keep growing. And it's going to keep abounding. It's going to keep on its pain. It's going to keep on increasing. It shall be marvelous in our eyes. And God says that my foresight is more keen than a whole God. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said my shield is far greater than that of Captain America. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said that my ways, he said my ways, he said my ways and my love. said, I believe in Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 29, my word like as a fire, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock, God, into little itty bitty pieces, so you better believe uh, that Thor ain't got nothing on my God, hallelujah Jesus, uh, my strength uh, is surpasses that of the Hulk, uh, and he's yet made perfect uh, in the midst of our weakness, uh, so whenever you get weak, uh, you can expect for God to step in, whenever you feel like you can't make it, uh, and you feel like life is getting the best of you, God says I'm vindicating, I am avenging, I am getting revenge, and when you see me do it, it shall be marvelous, I said it shall be marvelous, Continue to marvel over and over and over and over and over again. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I believe the Apostle Paul. He said this, son, uh, in Romans 12 and 19. And I'm going to my seat. Uh, Dear it, beloved, he said, avenge not yourselves. Uh, but rather give place unto wrath. Uh, anytime you come unto something, uh, you have to humble yourself before that thing. You have to come unto that thing. Uh, he said, he, he said, go under it. Uh, he said, humble yourself before the wrath. Uh, he's showing his mighty power. He's showing his infinite power. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, God says, Hallelujah. Do not give place unto wrath. Uh, for it is written that vengeance is mine and I shall repay. He said, I'm going to repay. Hallelujah, Jesus. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this battle that you've been fighting, this battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Don't you dare clap back. Don't you dare snap back. Don't you repost nothing to him. You ain't got a sub tweet. You ain't got a sub post. But God says if you hold your peace, the Lord is fighting this battle. So don't you wait. Tell him don't wait. Don't you wait until the battle is over. Some of y'all can shout right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because help is on the way. Pentecost is coming. And Jesus is sending forth his spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's sending forth a helper to lead and to God. We've endured the hard place. We've endured that of a good soldier. For 40 days, we forfeited our flesh. Hallelujah, Jesus. We call for carnality to be cast down into captivity. 
captivity. God bless your mother, old Bannon, as we decreed and we declared that every high place, sir, that has exalted itself in our lives, sir, it has to come down. Come on, somebody say it one more time. Say it's coming down. Come on, just yank it down. It's coming down, and I'm coming out. Hallelujah, Jesus, sir. And as it's coming down, and we're coming out, You've been through the fire and you fought a good fight. But those that have remained faithful through it all, I can hear the old soul saying, Through it all, I've learned to trust and depend on Jesus. But God won't even know. And as you go through it all, He said, Get ready. God says, Get ready to reap that other reward. Hallelujah, Jesus. For the glory of the Lord is already. revenge and it's happening right now look for it that means expect, expect something increase your expectation hallelujah jesus when you look for it and you expecting it when that thing pull up before it even get out the truck before it even get to your doorstep some of y'all can dance in that bed hallelujah jesus because we've been through the fire Over. I challenge some of y'all to cast it down and to call it out and just tell your enemy, I'm coming out of this, I'm walking into the promise, I'm walking into the place that which God is calling me into, and I'm going to shout right now because I made it 39 days, what is one more day to me? Jesus, I pushed aside my plate, I made the sacrifice, and I'm about to reap my reward. But it's the glory, I ain't got the voice to say it like I want, but it's the glory of the Lord that's going to shine upon you. Your health is about to be renewed. Your strength is about to be renewed. You're going to get a fresh wind as God breathes the new wind. God told me to tell you right now. He said that I have not seen, nor have ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of me. The things that God has in store for you, and what He has in store for you, He's opening up your airways. I hear you even in the spirit. The last three weeks you've had problems breathing. You ain't talked to me, and I ain't talked to you. But God says He's about to fix it. Up. He's opening up the airways. And as he opens up the airways, uh, he's going to impart his spirit in place. Uh, so every breath that was a struggle, he's getting ready to make the way easy. So just begin to inhale and exhale. I said inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And he's about to give you a fresh pull. He's about to give you a fresh wind. So look up. The enemy beat you up too much. The enemy thought he had to talk. But God says, This is your season for the end. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And I'm about to retain it. And can't nobody beat me, Jimmy. Can't nobody beat me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. Some of y'all need to jump on your feet and begin to shout with everything in you. Lord, I thank you for my revenge. Lord, I thank you for avenging me. I thank you for the strength. I thank you for the outpour that's happening.
fresh wind. Fresh wind. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Pour out, God. This is what you promised. God. We don't have to wait till tomorrow. But God can activate your tongues even now. But God says, don't look at the tongues. Get the whole shoe. Because anytime you buy a shoe, the tongue come with it. He says, seek after my spirit. Seek after my spirit. Come on, he's sweeping through this place even now. He's sweeping through here. Even now, in Jesus' name, come on. If you're ready to receive, just tell him, Lord, I'll receive you now. Come on, activate your now faith. Now faith is the substance of things that are hoped for. And it's the evidence of the things that's not seen. He said he's about to do it now. Come on, somebody shout now.
and y'all meet us tomorrow afternoon, 3.45 p.m., 15700 Hubble Street, in the big city of Detroit, Michigan. It's Pentecostal, and it's already and hit this house. Y'all go with God. Come on, y'all.